Hello and welcome to your parliamentary program, The Gavel. I'm Lan Ray Lassisi. Now, it's the second week of the recess embarked upon by the National Assembly to mark the Eid al Fatir's celebrations. This week, we'll be looking at some of the issues the lawmakers attended to before they commenced their break. We'll also be considering the efforts of the National Assembly to amend the 1999 Constitution. Now, recently, an assessment was conducted on the performance of the National Assembly in the past one year by a civil society group, the Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement. I had a chat with the head of research, policy and advocacy, Samson Itodo, who started with an overview of the assessment carried out. Well, basically, what we did was to look at um, the performance of the National Assembly in line with its cons constitutional functions of lawmaking, oversight, and representation, and also did an analysis of the report card presented by the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And our methodology was actually triangulated. Um, first, we, we did studies, um, conduct surveys, um, did focus group discussions at constituency level, also did desk review, um, reviewing reports of, um, of from the National Assembly, um, looking at handsets, looking at journals, and looking at bill progression charts, um, as well as a self-assessment of some legislators as well who participated in the entire performance um, audit. So that's the methodology um, that, that we used in the conduct of our own assessment. So it's a bit more scientific as opposed to um, just pedestrian form of um, of uh, assessment. And uh, what we actually found out, well, looking at the National Assembly compared to the 8th, 7th Assembly, the 8th House, the House of Representatives, seemed to be more active than the Senate um, in terms of the number of bills it has passed, in terms of um, oversight functions it's also performed, as well as its engagement with constituents. But if you look at these bills critically, and based on our analysis, um, a lot of them have to do with regulation, regulatory bills, um, and then a bit of money bills, as well as social bills. Um, over 60 to 70 percent of them is about creating new commissions or new institutions. And you're bound to ask yourself, if the federal government, if the executive has rationalized ministries and the Stephen Science report has also recommended that there is need for us in cutting down the cost of governance, we need to reduce the number of MDAs that we have or even merge them to prevent against duplication. But at the Senate and the House of Reps or the National Assembly, generally speaking, you see the introduction of more bills to establish more commissions. So that's also very, very worrisome. The second issue is about the sectoral debates that was introduced by the House. Such a fantastic idea. In parliamentarianism, using the UK for instance, the, the modes of holding executive accountable um, is via things like parliamentary questions. So when ministers of the cabinet are invited to, um, to, to hold debates uh, on several economic issues. And that sectoral debate that was introduced was, was, was very, very um, laudable by, by, by the House. Because it provided even Nigerians and even lawmakers who are making laws for the good um, governance of our country to appreciate what are the challenges and what is the policy direction of, of the administration. Then the issue of the legislative agenda. And quite frankly, we must commend the National Assembly, uh, particularly the Senate, because this is the first time the Senate is actually drafting for itself a legislative agenda. And I would say, and um, based on our assessment, in some of the engagements of the National Assembly in the last 365 days has been informed by the legislative agenda. However, the National Assembly has also shown, particularly the Senate, has also shown that it is not responsive to the needs of Nigerians. I give you a practical example. Nigeria is undergoing harsh economic conditions. The fall in, in oil prices uh, and the challenges in, in, in forests, the, the Niger Delta crisis, the insurgency in the Northeast, there are several challenges. And today you have states that cannot pay salaries. Unemployment is on a high increase. You've got job losses on a daily basis. But here you have a Senate that at the time that Nigerians were finding it very, very difficult to feed, they were buying cars and jeeps for themselves. And what does that tell you? It shows irresponsibility 
on the part of legislators who are representatives of the people. If they are truly in touch with their people and their constituents, then they will know that the priority, it's not about buying cars or appropriating money to actually um, buy cars for senators, whether be it for committee work or be it for whatever. But that's the excuse um, that they give. So in your study, what overall score would you say the national, for the National Assembly this year? No, you cannot, you cannot perform, uh, you cannot score them in, in that light okay, uh, without so. looking at. Now, if you, so for the House of Representatives, uh, uh, let me make a point. Yeah. And there's also a school of thought that believes that 365 days is too little mm -hmm. to actually assess the National Assembly in the light of the challenges that the Assembly faced with leadership crisis um, and then with the, with the other um, associated issues relating to, to the economy. But the House has performed um, creditably well uh, compared to the Senate and for very, very obvious reasons. But we, we, we must commend the leadership of, of um, Yakubu Dogara, um, who is the Speaker of the House, um, for the giant strides and leadership that he has demonstrated um, in, in fulfilling the legislative agenda. Today we are talking about e-voting, which is remarkable. And we, we are watching to see how this actually materializes so citizens will know how their legislators actually vote on, on, on issues. So compared to the Senate, the House has been, has been a lot more responsive. If you look at the number of petitions that the House um, received and considered, it's also more, um, it goes to show that citizens are believing more in, in the capacity of the legislature to actually represent um, its citizens. But, but, but we must make the point, um, and the fact is, for us to assess the National Assembly, the National Assembly has a critical role to play in ensuring that the agenda it has set for itself it performs and implements the agenda to the latter. There are signs to show that the, this Eighth Assembly can do more, but we need more. But let's not forget that in a presidential system of government, the doctrine of separation of power is very, very critical, as well as the twin principle of checks and balances. Executive and legislature relationship has been strained in the last 365 days. And that is impacting on governance. Whilst different arms of government enjoy their form of autonomy, we must appreciate, and particularly the executive and the presidency, must appreciate the fact that you've got a legislature that ought to be independent, though not absolute independence. But the National Assembly must, on a continuous basis, assert its independence. The issue of, like you said, the Eighth Assembly, um, how, what was your assessment of their ability to work together? Because uh, we, they, we, buy, we run a bicameral uh, legislature here. They don't, no work is actually said to be done if both of them have not agreed on anything per se. What's your assessment of their ability to work together? Um, they need to strengthen that. They need to be, to be united. They need to harmonize their position. Uh, one of the th indicators we, we have seen is joint committees conducting um, legislative business together, which is good. We need to see more of that. Uh, but the leadership of both chambers will need to work together and, uh, harmoniously and work in the same direction in fulfillment of um, the, the agenda of the EPC administration. Because we must continue em to emphasize the point that separation of powers is not separation of government. The federal government comprises both the executive and the legislature. It's very, very critical. We must make that point. So both chambers or both arms of government don't think that they are actually separate governments.